Hi everyone and welcome back. This is a new mini playlist and in this playlist we are talking about how we can deploy a React package, a Node.js package and Nest.js package to the GitHub. So we are going to create our private packages like a Node.js library package, React UI component package and Node.js utility package and then we are going to use those utility packages in the external projects. So this is a mini playlist because I wanted to cover all these things together. So there will be a couple of uh, videos in this. Hi everyone and welcome back. So in this video, we are going to talk about how we can publish a Nest.js dynamic module, which, which is doing dynamic initialization. Okay. So in the last video, we were talking about uh, static initialization of a module, random module dot for root. Now I want to change it. And I wanted to allow for root async also. So using config module, I should be able to pass. So this is what we want. I'll just replace it here. This for root for root async. And I should be able to depends on config service for min and max because we are passing two argument min and max. Maybe you have these two argument as a process environment variable. So now how this become a dynamic module because this module is not statically initialized. This is the dy dynamic module, but not statically initialized. But now this is dynamic module, which is dynamically initialized. So that is the difference between for root and for root async. In the earlier example, if I just try to undo this, This for root, right? In this for root, we were doing the same thing, but we were passing hard coded values. What if this value is coming from some dynamic initialized module? So that is what we are going to talk about. For that, we need to make our module compatible to that concept. You should be able to take the providers, and here we are going to take. So it should take use factories and all. This is the whole logic we are going to implement in the for root async. So our module can be dynamically initialized. It can be a config service or something else. We are injecting config service, config module. And from there, we are getting the value of min and max. This is what we are trying to do. This is what we wanted to achieve with the random module initialization. So we are going to create random module, publish it so that you can use random module like this. Okay. So how do we do this? Okay. I will go through the code because I have already coded this and was checking if it works. So this is the random number service. This is same as earlier. We are injecting this client module options. Client module options are the argument which you are going to pass at the runtime for the module. Right. So like in the type ORM module dot for root async, we are passing database arguments. So here random module uh, dot for root async, we need to pass the mean and max value through the config module. So this that is a dynamic initialization. Okay. We have same provider. So it is just creating the instance of the random number service. You see, it is giving us the random number service. The important part are these three tokens. These are nothing but a string. Either you can use a hard coded string. So we'll talk about this provider and this module. So this definition we have already discussed in the last video that when you want to just write for root and pass the options directly without dynamic initialization here we are passing the options which is min and max so i will just give you the instance of random module service and this is what your for root method is giving to whoever is calling it so in our other, another project we are going to call random module random number module dot for root pass the argument min and max and then it will give us the random module service now for root async, what are the differences here? 
Four root async can be initialized in three possible ways. So here first we are just creating a default provider. This is client module options we are injecting and client token and this is the use factor we are doing. That uh, this is going to give us the instance of random module service. This is the one way of doing it. The other two ways because here we have already added this provider. There are two more ways in which this provider can be created. Right that we are going to see. So here I have called another method this dot create async providers. This is the one default provider which I am just passing. So objective of this is returning the same signature module import export and providers module import export and providers. Here we need to import also because we may be dependent on third party module like config module. Here we are doing dynamic initialization where random number module will be initialized through config module and config service. So we have to import the third party dependencies here like this. Okay. And then this is how we are going to create providers. If you uh, have seen how dependency injection works, I mean in all different possible ways in which we can create a providers. Providers can be created with the help of use existing use factory use class. This is the default provider where we are just using use factory. The other two providers are can be created like this create a sync provider. And here in the option if option is use existing or use factory, then we can just create a sync provider like this. Otherwise, if it is a use class, then you need to provide a use class. And this is the class we are going to use option dot use class. Then here create a sync provider. What this is doing is this is just giving us if it is use factory then return this. If it is use class, then just give this whole sentence. So these are just a three different possible ways in which you can create a provider and you need to create a dynamic module in such a way that you should be able to support all these different options use class use existing and default provider. This may look a little tricky like how I'm writing this but I have created all the dynamic modules and we just follow the same syntax that we from for root we just written the providers default provider and from for root async we need to make it compatible in all different possible ways default provider and a create async providers based on what are the options we are passing. Options may be a use class, use existing or use factory. Use existing use factory. So we'll just do create async provider. And create async provider is doing this. Okay, what if it is not using use existing use class? So use factory on use existing, then it might be using use class then you need to create a sync provider and this is the use class and this is the class instance okay so this is service and we can just simply publish this thing i can just bump the package version let's uh, do four bump Not sure if it can pick my npm login. Okay, this has been published and you can see what is in the archive, what it is publishing. Index.d.ts. All the exports we are doing. And all the build artifacts. Build.js, build.ts, build.type definitions and their service. So this is published now how we can actually use this. I have already told you in this screenshot, this is how you will using it. Random number module dot four root async. Here I am passing config module. This is the dependence module and I'm using use factory as an option. So, and these are the options we have runtime options I'm passing. And this depends on the config module. So let's try to use this and try to see how it really works. So this is the place where we are using it. Export npm. So first set the npm token which you got from GitHub. 
and then npm install so this is npm rc file we have npm install minus minus save our package name which we can get from github okay so we got the package and here we can see that i will try to show how we have imported it okay i need to go t where is it yes here it is nest yes package this is the build artifacts which we have added using npm install now to use this what we need to do in the domain module just let me just delete this thing and inside source this is that module right i can just do simply is import random module from and here it will be random module right and what all methods it is exposing to us root for root async right and here you can do the same initialization you need to pass the options so you maybe if you have a config service you can pass the config service as a object here so here this is app module and for root async what it is taking input if you look into the definition it is taking random number module async options which can be these three either you use huge factory so out of these three we have to use one either we can use a huge factory right where we can inject our argument like the dynamic uh, config service which will give us the module options okay and inject inject maybe i will be injecting a config service here so you may have config service or not but if not like either you if you have a config service then you can inject a config module here and then inject a config service here and get these env uh, i mean min and max value from the config service currently we don't have any so i'm not going to inject anything and i can get these from environment variable so this is the simple implementation i mean this is also provide a for root and for root async both the both ways of initializing this let's say if i do for root then i don't need to pass all these objects for root is taking the options random number module options where, where you need to pass an object with these two properties only so here you can pass min and max so this is let's see, comma so both are both here looking same but the major difference is it is allowing you to dynamically initialize it from the third module so here you can inject a config module and config service and get the values from the config service this is mainly known where you are doing a static initialization and getting the values right away so this is for root and same implementation is for root async and for root async provides all different ways of initializing so if you see here for root async it also provides a use class use existing use factory you can also use use class so use factory inject inside inject you will specify what module you are injecting and use factory here and this is where you are going to return the module options for this so these are just uh, in the root async these are the different possible ways you are getting to initialize the module and for for root you just need to pass the runtime argument Okay, this is all about how you can create an SCS package and use that package in an, any of external package. We publish this package as a 
GitHub module and then we are installing GitHub module through NPM RC. Okay, this is overall about this whole playlist where we were able to publish the React package, Node.js package, Nest.js, three different type of variants. A static module, dynamic module, statically invoked, dynamic module, asynchronously invoked. 